What is up guys DSTK here Apple releases iOS and iPadOS 15.4 and now it's been a week more than a week so here's the video after using both the OS and I'm gonna cover as usual main about performance, OS stability, new features, bug fixes, benchmark testing, main about battery life and finally should you update or not. So if you're new here make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon for your notifications and simply let's just dive right in. Firstly, let's talk about the iPadOS 15.4. Here I am not covering the common feature of iPhone and iPad, only talking about the iPad dedicated feature. Rest is already covered in the iOS portion. You can simply skip accordingly. Timestamps are already down in the description below. So the size of iPadOS 15.4 is almost 1.11 GB and it may vary device to device depending upon which iPad you have. Main highlight of this update is of course universal control and everyone was excited since Apple announced it in the WWDC and finally it's here. Now you can move one cursor across the entire Apple ecosystem excluding iPhone to enable it open system preferences on your Mac, go to display and turn the universal control, select all the three options and same thing on an iPad open settings go to the general general tap on the airplay and hands off and turn the cursor and keyboard on and you are good to go and it will automatically sense where is the another device placed like vertically or horizontally left or right etc to each other now you can hover the cursor from one mac to another mac between multiple macs macs to ipad and vice versa but not from ipad to ipad not just the cursor you can use same keyboard and mice across all the devices and also so you can drag and drop files and folders from one device to another also now you can access applications that are only oriented to ipad like procreate and luma fusion etc to mac not the entire inter interface but yeah you can do most of the stuff like uh, you created something in the procreate then you can simply drag and drop directly to the mac's desktop in the same manner you can drag and drop 4k videos photos file folder etc from your mac to ipad seamlessly simple you have to move cursor to drag and drop and that's how to move file across the apple's ecosystem also if you are working on any project in imovie or davinci resolve 17 and want some file or clip from your ipad then simply drag and drop to the max desktop and from there you can directly move it to the main timeline it's so easy and fast as well also, Apple Pencil will add on its conveniency to Mac OS like you created something with Apple Pencil on your iPad and you can simply move it to Mac directly. Totally seamless connectivity and though it is in a beta version and have serious bugs too like if a third party mouse is connected to your Mac and while using universal control on your iPad, you cannot scroll things on iPad but you can do scroll things by using the trackpad or Apple's Magic Mouse. So that there are few more bugs but by the time apple will definitely resolve it moving to another feature is corner swipe gesture section under note settings click on quick note settings in this section you can select function for the left corner swipe and the right corner swipe separately as per your conveniency last only feature that is dedicated to ipad os is now you have an option to increase and decrease keyboard backlight directly from your control center if you are unable to find that option then first enable it from the settings go to control center and find for an option for keyboard brightness and add it to the control center as i already did it and that's it you will find few more common features between iphone and ipad in a while overall in terms of performance there is a thrill in the ipad was 15.4 as far as it is lot more stable somehow apple what you are doing where is the bugs maybe bugs will be there but yet not come to the eyes but yeah after all it is a good update for all ipad models now let's talk about main battery life as far as i am getting 11 hours of battery life in 0 to 100 percent charge which is quite impressive in ipad os 15 previously i was getting 5 to 8 hours of battery life on average in full charge as per the last 10 days analytics so definitely there is an improvement in battery life in ipad os 15.4 so if you have an issue in the older version then you should definitely update to the latest version overall as per my perspective ipad os 15.4 is a fabulous update of all the time in entire ipad ipadOS 15 you should definitely install it right away 
Now coming to iOS 15.4, the size of this update is 1.21 GB. It may vary from device to device. There are over 45 plus new features in this update. Some of them are common for iPad and iPhone both and some are not. So here I'm trying to cover all the useful features and extremely sorry in advance if I miss something. So starting from the main highlighted feature of iOS 15.4, of course, it is a face ID with a mask. This feature is only available for iPhone 12 and newer devices, not for the iPhone 11 and x series iphones don't know the reason behind it but it may be a marketing policy for of apple so if you need that feature then buy a new iphone doesn't make sense though it is a useful feature at this moment i have iphone 11 pro so unfortunately i can't show you by doing it but there are few steps how to enable it and use while wearing a mask so try it and let me know in the comment section does it work accurately or not next feature is emojis there are addition of over 112 new characters and 37 new emojis including new faces skin tones etc you can check directly in the keyboard after installing this os there is a good news for iphone 13 series user now the third party app will show animation in 120 hertz refresh rate previously there was a bug and app shows only animation in 60 hertz but now it's fixed in this update also, there is a changes for SOS calls. Now it can be activated by pressing either volume button along with the power button until countdown starts. Previously was working with the volume down button only. Now it works by pressing either of the volume button or by pressing power button five times. So that's a great conveniency in the emergency situation. In terms of privacy, Apple adding anti-stalking air tag update. So if someone is stalking you with the air tag, which is a crime, obviously but now you can find the information of the owner of that particular air tag under law enforcement act also by the time of setting up the air tag it will show a warning that the device is locked to an apple id and that using it to track someone without consent is a crime also there are new features in keychain now you can add note to any password entry like to which website it belongs to or whatever you want to add you can write it over here and you will find that note on that page also you can hide the password compromise alert and it will ship to hidden security and recommendation so by any chance you want to change the password of that particular website then you can do it right away from here only if you are an icloud plus user then now you can choose custom domain in hide my email next to it is now siri have a new voice for an american user which you can select it from these settings open siri and search and here it is Hmm, that was a quite heavy next feature is within SharePlay now the few third-party apps do have support to SharePlay contact like uh, any TikTok video something like this while you are on a FaceTime call but no idea for Instagram but it will give support after all it's a copy of TikTok <laughs> Tap to pay is another feature for iPhone to accept payment through pay, Apple Pay, contactless credit and debit cards and other digital wallets like PayPal, Paytm, Google Pay, etc. Basically, after this feature, there is a no need for bulky machine to accept payment. Lastly, Apple added an Apple Card widget in today's view, which will show your current balance and your daily spending in different categories in compact and organized manner. So that's a all feature I think you should know about. Actually, there are a few more, but we'll discuss later in another video if possible. So in terms of performance, older iPhones are suffering a bit, choppiness while opening apps, hanging problem and facing heating issue in normal users. But it is not a normal at all. But I will say you should not install this OS if your iPhone is older than iPhone X series. For newer devices, it is a quite decent. OS stability isn't good, but it's okay. Few more bugs while entering number in keyboard. It was taking a time after inputting some numbers, but now it is fixed in this update news visit there was a problem while opening article from the today's view which is fixed as well some user had problem in syncing photos and videos to icloud photo library so now it's been resolved too in ios 15.4 so if you have an uh, issue with that you should definitely update to the latest version about benchmark test, there are the results for the single course and multi course comparing with the older version. It's almost same, but you will find the results over here 
you can pause the video to check benchmark result for your iphone model basically results are almost similar to previous ios so lastly let's talk about the battery life it is a worse than ever for iphone 11 and older iphone models you can expect only 5 to 7 hour of screen on time as per 24 hours analytics in a full charge and for iphone 12 and 13 user battery life is decent enough but not good you can check last 10 days analytics as well but previously user was getting 10 to 12 hours of screen on time back in ios 14.8 actually many users are experiencing low battery backup since updating to ios 15 more precisely after updating to ios 15.2 here only getting 5 to 7 hours of backup so if you are more concerned about the battery life you should not install this update at all but if you are okay with it and then for new features and security update you can download this update but i highly prefer to skip for older iphone user more precisely precisely for iPhone SE users. So that was pretty much it about iOS 15.4 and iPadOS 15.4. Hope you will get answer of should you update or not. If you want to know anything else, please leave it in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you for stopping by till the end and as always, I will catch you in the next video.